Hi guys, uh, we're going to go through the 2013 Victorian Curriculum and Assessment Authorities Exam 2 in Maths Methods, uh, Units 3 and 4, the Extended Response Questions. Now, I'm going to assume that you have had a go at this exam before you even look at this video because that would be a great shame if you don't do that because the learning that you get out of this will be greatly diminished if you don't. Okay, so please do and um, come back then if you haven't already done that. Uh, in the meantime, I'll go through it now. Question one. Uh, trig, ha ha ha. The gardener is working in a temperature controlled greenhouse and during a 24 hour day time interval, the temperature T is given by this trigonometric thingy here, where T goes from 0 to 24. So okay, uh, T is time in hours from the beginning of the 24 hour our time interval. Let's have another look at this. Temperature, time, cos, something or other, and here, yeah, right, I get all that. Now, state the maximum temperature in the greenhouse and the values of T when this occurs. Two marks, guys, so you are required to do some working, have some reasoning there, and then an answer, okay? So we're looking for the maximum temperature in the greenhouse. Well, the maximum temperature, guys, it's uh, pretty simple. It's basically 25, which is the vertical displacement above the horizontal axis for this uh, function, and the amplitude is 2. Now, cos starts off at its maximum value, okay? So when x is naught, cos is already at its maximum, so we're definitely sure that the maximum will occur within this allocated time period, because it starts off as it ma at its maximum, and therefore the maximum is going to be 27 degrees, absolutely for sure. Now, we've also got to work out when uh, the, the values of time at which the maximum occurs. So therefore we know that um, the maximum occurs when this thing in here, this thing in here, there, equals zero, and then any multiple of 2 pi thereafter, where... So in other words, 0 plus 2k pi where k is a positive integer, okay? So therefore we can say that uh, t is going to be 0 or 16 or 32 or whatever, but we're only going from 0 to 24, okay? In this case, that's our answer, 0 or 16 hours. All right, guys, there's our two marks done and dusted, okay? Now, next bit, state the period of the function t. Well, the period is basically, you work it out by looking at this, uh, what's in the brackets here, after the cos sign there, and it's 2 pi over whatever this number happens to be here, which is a coefficient of the t term, and the number in this case is pi over 8. Therefore, the period is going to be 2 pi over pi over 8, which is 16 hours, okay? 16 hours, and that's our answer. Okay, there's another mark for us, okay, guys? Okay, next question. Find the smallest value of T for which the temperature is 26 degrees. The smallest value of T, in other words, the earliest time. Okay, uh, therefore we just put this. Now, this looks pretty easy, actually. Um, if we just rearrange that around, we're going to get cos of pi T over 8. It's going to be a half, guys. Uh, there it is. So, therefore, now think about that. When does cos of anything equal a half? Well, the anything must be a pi on 3, okay? A pi on 3, quadrant 1 value. Now we solve it for t, and we get t is 8 over 3, and that is our answer, okay? Yeah, pretty good, eh? That's a two-mark question. We're going well. Okay, now, um, d. For how many hours during the 24-hour time interval is t greater than or equal to 26. Now this is a bit more complicated. This is worth two marks and you're going to need to sketch yourself a graph I think. Uh, a, a picture is worth a thousand words as I keep saying. So let's have a look. Uh, this was the first occasion where the temperature equaled 26 here at 8 on 3 hours. Okay now thinking about that go to the next maximum okay the next maximum and then go left 8 on 3 and right 8 on 3 and you've got the bandwidth over which the temperature is going to be uh, greater than or equal to 26 you see it's just the shaving off the hump of the graph isn't it do you get that guys see how good a picture is it's absolutely sensational 
having a picture, e.g. a graph in maths. So now we can just easily work it out. Um, we'd have the total time is 8 over 3 times 3, which would be simply 8 hours. Okay, there you go, you got your marks. Yeah, very good. Okay, what on earth is this? Let's just try and digest this together. <clears throat> uh, Trigg is designing a garden that is built on flat ground. In his initial plans, he draws a graph, uh, a graph of y equals sine x for x goes from 0 to 2 pi, uh, and he decides that the garden beds will have the shape of the shaded regions. This guy's obsessed, uh, shown on the, garden, the diagram below. He includes a garden path, which is shown as line segment PC. All right, so this is the graph of sine x. Okay, so get the previous graph of temperature out of your mind. This is just sine x, guys. Okay, good old sine x. Um, this is the garden path. The line uh, through points P, where x is 2 pi on 3, and y is root 3 on 2, and C, which is this point here, uh, at C and naught, is a tangent to the graph of y equals sine x at point P. Yeah, well, this line here is a tangent to the line, to the graph of y equals sine x at point P. So what does all that tell us? Goodness me. Find dy dx when x is 2 pi on 3. Well, that's pretty easy. That's a one mark question. Okay, well, we've absorbed the information and we can easily get this mark because the derivative of sine x is cos x and we know that cos of 2 pi on 3 is going to be minus a half. Yes, thank you. Now, show that the value of C, yes, uh, show the value of C is that. All right, um, I think we can do that. Uh, there's, our, there's our sketch again. Now, how are we going to do this, guys? The value of C. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you rush off and get the equation of a line. I think all we need to do is concentrate on the gradient of this line because we know the gradient of this line is minus a half, don't we? So therefore, surely we can just use that um, formula for the gradient uh, with the rise and the run to get this value of C, which makes a gradient of minus a half. That's what I would be thinking of doing. Yes, there you go. M is minus a half equals, now, that looks like Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus X2. And you can see that that this little beastie here is the only unknown in that equation now and we can solve for it so hopefully that'll work out let's go for it now just a bit of plug and chug now I've just put this 2 from the numerator down here on the denominator now I'm going to simplify it a little bit more uh, yes the 2's cancel out and what we get is that therefore uh, by cross multiplying I can say that uh, this times this equals this times this which gets us here and we're nearly there guys so therefore C is going to be exactly what they asked us to show you it was and there it is okay so we've done it we're going very well okay now in further planning for the garden Trigg uses a transformation of the plane defined as a dilation of a factor of K from the x-axis and a dilation of a factor of M from the y-axis where K and M are positive real numbers Therefore, x dashed, uh, let x dashed, p dashed, and c dashed be the image under this transformation of the points x, p, and c, respectively. Good grief. Find the values of k and m if x dash p dash equals 10 and x dash c dash equals 30. Where's the picture, guys? All right, so, okay, now what are we doing? We're basically transforming this whole thing. Good grief. And we're going to... Uh, we're going to move k uh, by a factor of k up that away, and m is a dilation from the y-axis. All right, I've got that right, haven't I? Now find the values of k and m if the new if x to p ends up being 10 instead of root 3 on 2, and x to c ends up being 30. Uh, instead of whatever it was, okay, because we just worked out what C is before, didn't we? Okay, well, it's been stretched in the Y, it's been stretched in the X, okay, and the anchor point is basically here. So if we can work out 
uh, what the stretch is, that's just going to give us directly what K and M are, I think. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not so hard. It looks revolting, especially in an exam setting, but it's not that bad. So XP is root 3 on 2, and X dash P dash is 10. Therefore, we can just divide the 10 by the root 3 on 2 to get K. There it is. That wasn't so bad, was it? So it looks like 20 over root 3. Uh, that's what K is. Now let's do M now. XC was the, the value of C we got before, minus the, uh, that's the X value at C, minus the X value at X, at capital X. So we get that. And what does that get us? It gets us root 3. Oh my goodness. That's nice and simple, isn't it? Uh, and now we know that X dash C dash being 30, therefore the the stretch factor, the M, is going to be 30 over root 3. And there it is, okay? So, yes, uh, I've just basically rationalised that, but I didn't have to. And that's the answer for M. Goodness, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Okay. Find the coordinates of the point P dashed. Oh, well, that's going to be pretty easy, isn't it? It's going to be very... It's only a one-mark question. So, therefore, P dash is going to be... Uh, Yes, that's what it's going to be. The x coordinate of p was 2 pi and 3, but it's been stretched horizontally by a factor of 10 root 3, this one here. Okay, so that's what p is going to be stretched by to get p dashed. Now, uh, that's the x coordinate, that is. Now, the y coordinate was root 3 on 2, and that's going to be stretched upwards by a factor of k, and k was. 20 over root 3. So if we work that out, guys, we'll be home and hosed with this question. Okay? Yeah, we can cancel there, and uh, yes, another simplification there. 2 goes into 20 10 times, and we're going to get, we are going to get that. P dashed. What a monster. But that's correct, and we've done it. Okay? That's a one mark question. Yes, students really hate transformations, but this stuff isn't so bad if you just, you know, um, just have a close look at it in, uh, and basically analyse it without the fear factor, and you'll get it out, guys, no problem. Now, uh, question two. Fully Fit is an international company that owns and operates many fitness centres, that is, gyms, uh, in several countries. At every one of Fully Fit's gyms, each member agrees to have his or her fitness assessed every month by undertaking a set of exercises called S. There is a five-minute time limit on any attempt to complete S, and if someone completes S in less than three minutes, they are considered fit. All right. At Fully Fit's Melbourne gym, it has been found that the probability that any member will complete S in less than three minutes is, is five-eighths. This is independent of any other member. In a particular week, 20 members of this gym attempt S. Find the probability correct to four decimal places that at least, that means 10 or more, of these 20 members will complete S in less than three minutes. Mmm, I see a binomial, don't you? I see a binomial. See, the probability of doing it in less than three minutes is five-eighths. Okay, and we've got... How many people? We've got 20 trials, probability is 5 eighths, and we're looking for the probability of, of um, getting 10 or more successes in our trials, okay? So I always start off by saying, uh, let X be the number who complete S in less than 3 minutes, okay? Define your variable. That's what I've been trained to do, and I always do that, and it helps me think more clearly. So X follows a binomial distribution uh, with n or 20 trials and p or 5 eighths uh, is the probability of success, okay? So therefore, if we just go straight for the CAS, uh, this is uh, using a TI handheld CAS device which we use in my school. Uh, that's a binomial CDF, uh, n is 20, p is 5 eighths and the lower limit is 10, the upper limit is 20 and we get this. Now we go back to the question, how many decimal places? Four. So it's going to be 0.9153 to the requisite number of decimal places. Okay, there's our answer. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Yeah? All right, let's go and do another one. Uh, given that at least 10 of these 20 members complete S in less than 3 minutes, what is the probability can correct to 3 decimal places now that more 
than 15 of them complete S in less than 15, uh, than 3 minutes, I mean. Um, well, this is basically just a conditional probability thing. We've done hundreds of these. So we use this formula here. The probability that X is greater than 15, given that X is greater than or equal to 10, is the probability that X is greater than 15 and X is greater than or equal to 10, which just means, in the end, uh, X is greater than 15, because X is greater than 15 covers both of those, being greater than 15 and greater than or equal to 10, divided by uh, the probability that X is greater than or equal to 10. Now, we can just go straight for the CAS with that, uh, just as we did before, and we get this, uh, 20 trials, 5 eighths probability, now, greater than 15, you've got to be careful with this, greater than 15 means 16 lower limit, upper limit 20, and this one on the denominator here is, yes, see, greater than or equal to 10 means uh, lower limit 10 and upper limit 20. So you have to be careful with that, guys. They'll try and trick you if they can, okay? And what are we doing? Three decimal places, so what's that going to be? 0.086, I would think, and that's our answer. Excellent job. Now that was worth three marks. I'm blown if I can work out why that's worth three marks. It seems pretty simple to me. But anyway, that is the that's the marking allocation. So um, hopefully we've put enough in there to get our three marks, guys. We've we've put a, a setup formula and we've solved it with the CAS and we've come up with an answer. Well, um, I can't see how we could lose any marks. We've done everything we should do. So let's keep going. Uh, Paula is a member of Fully Fits Gym in San Francisco. She completes S every month as required, but otherwise uh, she does not attend regularly, so her fitness level varies over many months. All right. Paula finds that if she is fit one month, the probability that she is fit, oh, mark off, mark off, mark off, um, that the probability that she is fit the next month is three quarters. If she is not fit one month, probably that she is not fit the next month is going to be a half, yes, okay. If Paula is not fit in a particular month, what is the probability that she that she is fit in exactly two of the next three months? Two mark questions, so working required. Mm. Well, we what we've got to do is get our setup transition matrix sorted out, and then we've got to work out all the possible ways that she could be fit in exactly um, two months out of three, and then work out the probability of those. Okay, this is a bit of an annoying, tedious kind of question. Um, so, okay, there's my transition matrix. We better fill in the numbers. Okay, um, I always recommend you put the these uh, the F and F dashed here, fit and not fit, and fit and not fit up here. This is the given part. This is the uh, the now part. That's the given bit. Okay. And there are the numbers, all right? So that's the first thing we've done. Now, what have we got? Uh, these looks like the options for uh, fitness uh, in two of the next three months. So we could have, um, we've got two Fs and an F dash. So it's just the number of ways you can juggle that around so that it's different each time. So what I would, it looks like what I've done there is I've just altered the position of the F dash, right? So it's on the end there, it's in the middle there, it's at the start there. That looks like the three options. Uh, for fitness uh, in exactly two of the next three months. Right now, what we've got to do now is work out the probability of those, uh, knowing that she was not fit um, in one particular month. All right, because we need to know that. That's the sort of the starting thing. So therefore, now this I know, I know. Don't worry. Look, uh, this is now. Just watch this. See this first one here. This first one here. Now, the first month she wasn't fit, remember? So that's a fit given not fit, not fit in the in the first instance. And then the second month, he, she was fit given that the, she was fit in the first uh, month, if you like. I'll call the I'll call this not fit. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll call this not fit in the particular month month zero, right? Now let's just go back and look at this again. So that's. Fit in month one given not fit in month zero times probability of fit in month two given that she was fit in month one times the probability that she was not fit in month three given that she was fit in month two. Do you get me? Now you can do that same sort of analysis for 
uh, each of these other scenarios here, this one and this one. So you can say, that's all right, let's go for it. Now, fit month zero was a not fit, right? So that's fit given not fit times probability of, this is a not fit given fit in month one, uh, not fit month two given fit in month one times probability of fit in month three given not fit in month two, and you get the idea, don't you? Now, we've just got to basically... Uh, fill in the numbers from our transition matrix here into all of this gobbledygook, okay? I told you it was annoying. So you get that. You get that, you keep your head, you work that out, and we're nearly there now. We're nearly there, guys. So if you um, LCM that to uh, 32 on the denominator, you are going to get that, and then you are going to get that, which is the answer. Okay, that is the answer. Two marks. Okay. Now, when uh, Fully Fit surveyed all its gyms throughout the world, it was found that the time taken by members to complete S <laughs> is a continuum random variable. Well, of course, uh, X with a probability density function G as described below. Okay, that's all right. A two mark question. Look, two mark question. We've got to find the expected value of X. All right, that's just, we're going to put that into our CAS and we're going to work it out. Um, so I'll show you. Uh, yes, that's what e of x is. It's x, uh, the integral of x times g of x with respect to x, okay, over that whole realm there. It looks like it goes from 1 to 5, and we can put this in the CAS device that we use as a hybrid or piecewise function. There it goes. You see, I've put it in there. Uh, this first bit for uh, x going from 1 to 3, this second bit going from x is 3 to 5, and having done that, I can just basically just do this in the next step, and the CAS is smart enough to work out this the delineation between when x is 1 to 3 and when x is 3 to 5 over the whole uh, definite integral from 1 to 5, and it gives me an answer, da -da -da -da, and how many decimal places? Four decimal places. Yeah, you always got to look at that. Always got to look at that, guys. Four decimal places, so 3.0458 looks like our answer and we've done it okay so that's the expected value of x okay uh, right next bit in a random sample of 200 fully fit members how many members would be expected to take more than four minutes to complete s okay more than four minutes to complete s give your answer to the nearest integer okay well that's just basically an area under the graph thing area under the graph of the probability density function uh, so it's from 4 to 5 we're looking for uh, that's the probability that's the probability that one person will take uh, expected to take more than four minutes to complete s and then we've got 200 people we multiply it by 200 it's a two mark question that's our setup statement there's our CAS and we get this now going back to the th to the question, give your answer to the nearest integer. Yeah, 52. 52 people. There, there's your answer. Okay? Now, this is question three, but we're not going to do this one now, seeing that we've been going for quite a long time. So we'll leave this one, uh, question three and question four, until the next exciting video. Okay? So uh, I hope you got some value out of that. I really do, and I hope that you're doing plenty of practice and getting really, really good at this stuff. Okay? We'll see you soon.